Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you guys are new here, my name is Inkenna. I am responsible for everything that goes on here. If you guys haven't already, go ahead and click that subscribe button so you never miss a video from me. And also follow me on Instagram because that's where you're gonna find me 99% of the time if I'm not here. So as you guys can tell from the title of today's video, I'm gonna be talking all about my nursing school application process. So let's go ahead and get right to it. In total, I applied to 12 schools. Three of those were out of state. I submitted everything for basically every single program um, for, mo for the most part, with the exception of a few. For the majority of the programs, I submitted everything in November. I did go to open house for two schools in state. One of those, I think it really helped because when I did go to for an interview at the school, they could really put a name with a face and they're like, oh, I remember you, I've seen you before. So it really showed that I was interested and also I got to ask as many questions as I wanted to without having to send my advisor a thousand emails. So I definitely encourage you if they have like a meet and greet type of thing, definitely go and go prepared with questions. With the exception of that one school that I did an interview at, um, all the rest of them were either accept, reject, wait list. In total for most of the schools there was a one to two month turnaround time. That That's about the average for all of them. As of right now I'm still waiting to hear back from one school, only one school out of the 12 that one school is just kind of like at this point I've already paid my seat deposit for the school that I am going to um, so it wouldn't have done me any good it was one of those things where I'm like if I don't I wanted to go there but I was like if I don't get in then you know there's still some hope at the very end of the summer I think I won't be finding out from them until like the second week of July and by then I will <laughs> really fully be immersed into this whole um, process of actually getting ready for school overall in comparison because I know a lot of people are interested as to why I picked nursing school over med school that will be a separate video within itself if it's not already up if it is it's gonna be linked up here but I digress. Just comparing um, the two, it is a lot cheaper to apply to nursing school. Um, most applications ran me anywhere from $30 to $75. Um, the one that was $75, that was just as expensive as applying on any of the common application services for med school. Um, but for the most part, they were like $30, $40. I will say there's a quicker turnaround as opposed to uh, medical school. Medical school, you're waiting months, months, months. Whereas I just told you guys, um, um, some of these it's as like they just fill the program as they have space so you could apply in November and know by, by December if you got in so definitely for me um, I'm pretty impatient so it was really good and it really calmed my nerves to quickly be finding out okay I got accepted I think there was one program that I applied and I found out in a week that I got accepted <laughs> Another good thing is that there are no secondary applications, so you're not writing more essays. As I mentioned before, another point is that interviews are very, very rare. All of the uh, schools that I apply to is basically on a point system. So uh, the people, let's say one program said that they accept 50 people and they just go in a list, they rank, they give you points. So if you get like an, an A in anatomy and physiology one, that's 50 points. If you get a B, that's 30 points. If you get a C, that's 10 points. So they accumulate all your points and I think the max you can get is 390 your T score is lumped into that and then also they have an ATI critical thinking test and um, basically out of all the prerequisites that you have to take for that school you can get a possible 390 points and the first 50 people who have the highest points those people are accepted and that's it so that's how they do it. Um, so that's, I guess, kind of the general idea of how they do the point system um, for these schools. Some of the schools do require a CNA license. Out of the 12 schools that I applied to, I believe three of them required me to have a CNA license. Um, one of them required it at the time of application, and then the other two, it was if you are offered a spot, you will have to have a CNA license. I believe it was by May 1st, and if you didn't have it by then, you would have had to forfeit your spot, but you found out in February. So um, most programs you could end up you know start doing the CNA program and finish it and get it in a timely manner it's just um, finish the program in a timely manner it's just a matter of scheduling and if could you get a test date and what if you don't pass so it was one of those things where just get it done get it out of the way so that you don't end up forfeiting your seat and it's also nice to have the CNA license um, just because you can make extra money while you're in nursing school you can work PRN part-time whatever works for you I know 
in Georgia, all of the hospitals that I looked at for externships, they require you to be a junior, like have finished, they require you to have finished your junior year before you can apply for an externship. So going into senior year, so that summer after junior year, you can start applying for an externship. But it's completely optional, you don't have to get it. If your school doesn't require you and you know, you're pretty financially stable, you don't have to do it, but I would recommend it. It is pricey. I think for my program, it was $640. So it pays for itself though. I get invaluable experience and you make the money back. And it's also nice to have good extra money um, so you don't have to take out excess loans. I'm not gonna be working full time, but this whole summer I'm not taking classes. So that gives me time to save and have a good cushion uh, for like an emergency fund once school starts and I'm not working as much. So once school starts with the CNA license at the hospital I work at, I'm working PRN, so as needed, but my PRN requirement is I have to work two days a month. So I could work a Sunday and a Saturday, work one weekend out of the month and just be done for the month. But of course, when holidays come around like Christmas and um, over the summer then I can work like crazy or over spring break I can work like crazy and make some extra money. In terms of what was needed for the application process I did have to submit a resume. The personal statement depending on the school just for average it was 350 words to 500 words. I did not have to submit any letters of recommendation however for the school that I am attending I did submit two letters of recommendation because they allowed you to submit supplemental documentation. And I thought why not it's not required but but it can't hurt me. At one school, I did have to write a 500 word essay. It wasn't a um, personal statement. It was rather the prompt was, why do you have a passion for nursing? Um, and another school, it was 300 to 500 words of why um, do you want to go to this school? Overall, a major part of the decision is your prerequisite GPA. So if you're somebody who is getting ready to start taking your prerequisites for nursing school or is about to start applying, um, you just wanna remember that you wanna do as well as possible in those prerequisites because the information only builds on itself. Um, so you wanna make sure that you're getting A's, high B's um, in those classes to really show that you have a mastery of the information. And also, I mean, they're gonna want somebody who has a 4.0 as opposed to somebody who has a 2.1 on their prerequisites. The person with a 4.0 is more likely to get in. So definitely something to remember. Um, I know that personally I took anatomy and physiology one. I took it my first year out of undergrad and I ended up retaking it the summer of 2017. So last summer I retook it and I got a phenomenal grade in it. So if you have to do that, you know, be honest with yourself and say, okay, I didn't get the best grade and I know I can do better and retake it. I know plenty of my friends who are starting nursing school, like we took classes this past semester and they said, yeah, I took the class. I didn't do so well, retook it, got an A. So just be honest with yourself, make the necessary sacrifices to get where you need to go. So even if that means repeating the class, definitely do that. Just so you're not wasting whole application cycle, not being a competitive applicant. Something that I've learned from this application cycle was a lot of schools used a weed out process so if you weren't done with your prerequisites they might not have said it but um, I know one school in particular they were rejecting people who had 3.9s 3.8s and um, one person had called the school and had asked why did they get rejected and they were taking microbiology and the school said yes we you know say you can still have prerequisites in progress however there was somebody who had everything done had the same stats as you so of course they already know this person got an A in microbiology and you're still taking the class and you're not going to be finished until May whereas we're letting people know they got in in February so I would say if you can knock out your prerequisites early even if it means you have to take summer school one year just do it knock it out and that way you don't have to worry about I'm, I still have this class in progress you know it's done you know what you need to work on and then also that way if you have to retake a class then you have that extra semester I will say there were a few nursing programs that I wanted to apply to but I couldn't apply to because they required you to be done with your prerequisites and of course as I've mentioned before this past semester so spring of 2017 spring of 2018 excuse me spring of 2018 I was taking anatomy physiology 2 with lab microbiology 2 with lab and abnormal psychology. I will say one of the major cons about applying to nursing school was um, you had to apply to the school for certain schools you had to apply to the school and then pay another fee to apply to the nursing program. However um, I'll say like just an example Kennesaw State I was already a student there so I I mean I assume you would have had to um, 
get accepted to the school but since i was already accepted at the school there was no additional fee for applying to the nursing program um and the community college that i did take classes at you had to go to an information session you sat through it, it was like an hour and 15 minutes but it was totally free to apply but again with that you had to apply to the school and i think it's like 25 dollars to apply to the school and then once you're in there's no additional fee um the school that i'm attending in the fall you just had to pay your nursing application fee you didn't have to get accepted to the school so i know um there was another school in the state that i really really wanted to go to it was kind of tied with the school that i'm going to um in the fall and they made you apply to the school and then once you got accepted to the school you had to apply to the nursing program and pay a fee and apply to the nursing program and it was just really annoying honestly i will say definitely apply far and wide i applied to 12 schools um going back to the med school thing i applied to 27 med schools so 12 schools with pretty broad variety um the only thing that stopped me from applying for more was because as i said i submitted a lot of things in late november so a lot of deadlines closed in october so i'd missed the deadline so that excluded me from a lot of programs and then a lot of programs made it so that you had to take certain classes at their school and you couldn't take them anywhere else i was happy and content with the 12 schools that i did apply to but this is definitely something that you want to research ahead of time just so you don't exclude yourself from potentially getting into your dream school because of one class one last thing that i wanted to mention again was that um a lot of schools do not require you to have a letter of recommendation however it doesn't hurt to have one or two just in case like in my situation um one school said you could upload any type of supplemental documentation so i had two on hand from when i applied to med school and i uploaded those and i think that they really helped one was from an assistant medical director and another was from another one of the attendings that i worked with um but it just it doesn't hurt to have it and i mean you never know like if you're applying to a scholarship you might need it it's just good to have on hand that's pretty much the general overview if you guys have any questions comments or concerns definitely leave them down below and i'll get back to you guys at my earliest convenience so so if you guys have any questions, I already said this part. I really hope that you guys enjoyed the video. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. Give it a thumbs up if you did like it. And I'll catch you guys later. Bye.